Now let's blow up the bomb. So if we take the uh, fuse and the soot and the sparks, let's hide those for now and focus our attention on what we want to do with the bomb geometry. So we're going to start by taking that geometry and applying a simple fracture to it. It's going to think about it a bit and it's going to come back with a network set up for RBD and already fractured. Now we're going to set the start frame to 200. Let's set that to 200 there. We'll focus our attention to the end explosion part uh, for this. Now we're going to go in and under the bullet solver we're going to put a ground plane down. We'll need that for the pieces to fall on. And we're going to go to the advanced tab and we're going to just take away the glue. Since this, we're going to have the bomb just explode. Uh, we don't need glue to be breaking glue for this. We just want it to fall. Well, not fall. We want it to just explode when the time comes. So right now it's just falling to the ground based on gravity. Uh, what we're going to do is set it up with some parameters, uh, some attributes that will allow it to just take off. So we're going to start with that attribute adjust vector. We're going to attach it uh, between the RBD configure and the fracture solver on the third line there. And this one we're going to enable preprocess, overwrite initial value, and we're going to go direction only. And we're going to do spread and noise. So we're going to spread angle is going to go from 15 to 120. And so it's going to take this velocity and sort of go from there. And the noise pattern, we're just going to have P for the points. The element size is going to be 0 0.5. That'll, that's the size of the pattern, uh, the noise pattern and how it fits into there. And we're going to have a post process where we're going to uh, do a minimum length of 20. So once we have that, we can go and press, let's zoom out a bit and just press play. And we'll see that we get, well, a much stronger sort of reaction where we're basically taking the velocity, we're adding velocity to this and just the pieces are just flying off um, as they need to. So if we go to RBD configure, uh, we can actually do something interesting called setting up speed limits. So we can say, uh, let's do the speed max and the spin max. So we're going to just set it to 2 and 3.30 for now and just see what that does. So it allows us some control over what was there before. So now it's going really slowly. So it's being dampened quite a bit by these limitations. So if we set the uh, speed to more like 10 and the max uh, spin to 60, uh, we get a more interesting result. And it's probably a little bit more akin to what we're looking for. Uh, and of course, we could increase those values if we wanted to, you know, just let things loose. But uh, this gives us control that we want to. We can also increase the number of scatter points. So the fracture now, instead of, uh, we'll have a lot more detail to it. Uh, and maybe go with the max, the length go 50. Like just really let it go. And um, maybe going the initial vector going up, we'll go 5 with that. So we go boom. And now we get a much nicer result. Uh, for those pieces. And of course this is going to happen while the uh, pyro effects is, is occurring um, and we'll actually create some interaction between this and the fireworks or the, the pyro effects. So that's that's cool. Now once we have this what we want to do is cache it out um, so we don't have to sim it all the time. We'll have it actually loading from disk. So we're just going to call it exploding bomb uh, in slash geo slash um, bomb and we're going to save to disk. So that then once you press that it's already set for load from disk and so now you can actually scrub through that and you've got the explosion ready to go. So yeah so that's all it took to get us a nice little uh, explosion for the bomb and now we'll have our um, fracture out or explode out exploding bomb out uh, which will uh, be used for rendering. Thanks.